Hello everybody and welcome back to episode 25 of Deep Guard, which was supposedly going to be the last one. Because when I was thinking about all the things that we have achieved, a web spitting forgotten beast comes around the corner. So, well, I haven't seen that one coming, but uh, Rayali whatevers is going to have to wait. But Rayali is also a wonderful example of why we are sorta of completed with this fortress. You see, by now, whatever might attack Deepguard, we will capture it. If we can't capture it, we've seen in the example of that fire guy that we will hold out until we can eventually kill it. It was a very big surprise to me that a blind creature was such a uh, big challenge, but you see, there is always something new to discover about this game. So today we're going to go over some finishing touches, talk about the story of the Banner of Shadow and the future of this place and the upcoming series that I'm going to prepare after this one, obviously. But first, Rayali Hollow Sunken must be monitored. This creature is still a big threat and could easily wipe out the entire fortress if we'd let it. But obviously we don't let it. There we go! Welcome Rayali in this new home of yours. Zoot, zoot, and that's that. Bembool, the engraver, has been found dead. So... Isn't that... No, that was not my, uh, my, my, my baron. I'm still completely clueless where my, uh... Ah, that, that was uh, the, uh, one of the bat creatures has found another victim. Um, I'm still absolutely clueless about where my my baron found his death this is really driving me nuts because it i i really would like to to say goodbye to ubul it was ubul not bembul but yeah you get the idea so in the meanwhile we're uh, we're safeguarding our our citizens while the last few invaders of this place are being whittled down by the military i mean it is only a temporary victory, as always, and the bat people of Deep Guard will be a everlasting menace for this place, because as far as I know, these creatures, they never die out. They just uh, come again and uh, come again and come again and come again. So probably it ain't wise of me to, to kill that last of his kind here. Probably we can't even. This guy seems to be locked in cozily between the door uh, between the trees there, and I'd say we leave him there. And so, altogether, Deep Guard has fulfilled its mission. We have a trap system that captures all of the forgotten beasts on all three layers, and very, very reliably so. If it ain't a fire-breathing blind creature, things are absolutely fine. And we even have made it so that this, any one of these creatures that we capture can be transported anywhere we like. We tried to kill the uh, fire-breather with creatures out of tier 2, so altogether, yeah, this, this place is pretty much where I wanted it to be. I'm very happy about that. We're going to add in a few more traps. And a few more gemstone windows, obviously. I promised them as much. But this corridor here is offering very important safety for this place, as is this one. All right. We ran out of weapons to use, but that doesn't matter. Deep Guard can constantly forge new weapons. All right. So... This is basically one of the favorite parts of my city here, where the people are walking by a door where the uh, where, where imminent death for the entire fortress is lingering. We are also by now a county. I think uh, we would have easily made this place even into a duchy if the baron didn't or the count didn't die. My my grief does my grief does no 
no boundaries. Seriously, this makes me very, very sad because Ubul was one of the people that was around since the beginning. And this was his dream. So, well, the victory of this place leaves a bitter taste of my mouth for the Banner of Shadow. But at the end of the day, the fortress will prevail. And that is what really counts. I really feel uh, strangely enthralled by the uh, story of this place and the story of these people. This is something that where Fortress really does gosh darn it well. I gotta say, I know almost no other sandbox game that does such a darn good job at creating real, real stories. A creeping eye is fighting with a weaver. That doesn't sound, uh, that doesn't, uh, for a boat, uh, that doesn't sound good either. So we are sending the red torches to that. As you see there, there will be always little battles with the uh, creeping eyes, obviously. Jeez, the depths really don't know any boundaries in their weirdnesses. But uh, altogether, I feel as if we are, we have braved the depths here. Which makes me very, very happy. Because I gotta honest, I gotta be completely honest with you guys. When the uh, when we had that uh, fight with the uh, fire creature, I was very concerned for a while. So con creeping eyes zero, dwarves one. Um, I was very concerned that my entire plan might uh, grind down to a to a failure, even. But uh, we've beaten the Balrog. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, well, I think the only thing that really is lacking in my fortress's security plan is a, ca is a proper cave-in trap. This is what we, uh, what we should have brought for situations like this uh, fire breeder there, but, uh, well, it is okay to be unprepared sometimes. There's always a next fortress, you see. Alrighty. So, yeah. I will spread the wealth all over the place. I don't think we get another shot at uh, calling out another baron. I've never seen that happen, that if one of my nobles died, I've never, I never um, got a new one back. If I'm missing a point, let me know in the comment section after all. This game's complexity is mind-boggling. So, but I am trying to fulfill my promise of a gemstone window for every citizen of this, uh, of this town. Because I feel like that means more to me than my, one might imagine. I love these gemstone windows, that's all. It's been a wild ride here with Deep Guard, though. The whole place here was or is still very easy to maintain. I I was afraid that the amount of invaders at tier three caverns would be a lot more um, relentless, but turns out that we got the situation quite decently under control. Our steel clad soldiers seem to be quite a force to be reckoned with. And uh, you know, After all, we've lost almost none of our fighters in the uh, combat with the invaders. I just uh, try to remember if there was anybody uh, there. I think the invaders really took the uh, least blood from our soldiers. It's been mostly forgotten beasts all the way along, murdering our people. But, well... I'm very happy about this uh, trap system. What do we have here? Giant Ulm and a giant cave spider. So, there's the demise of the giant Ulm. I think we should uh, plaster this place up there with, uh, with some traps as well. There we go. This should do the trick. I want to automate these encounters as good as possible. Oh, boy, that's a big, nasty one up there. It's almost dead, but I'll better send my soldiers after it. All 
All right. Unlike Forgotten Beasts, these creatures are not nearly as deadly uh, because they're uh, they are unable to just one-shot people. And one Eurist claimed a workshop for some artifact action. You do you. Finally, some normal things are happening around here again. I like that. Okay, so back to the city. Ugh, somebody get that all the way, it stinks. Oh well. Here. So, I meant to check one other thing. And that's been the books. We've been writing books a while now and see. And I meant to check if we found some new entries in or knowledge. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a lot, of, a lot of new things. So about animal remedies. Authored by a deal. Remedies prepared from animals. Overflows with sadness. Passable prose. Okay. Let's go deeper down the line. Eh. As soon as my techniques are behaving again. There we go. So, mm, what is it else? Discourse on toxic substances. Classification of toxic substances. The writing is depressing. A deal. First, sadness, now depression. Come on, man. Common sense excision. Adil's next uh, book, he, he's on a writing spree. So, the surgical method of excision, a hint of viciousness. It's not awful, but not very good either. Okay. Well, at least he seems to be past his uh, depressions. Now. Alright. Altogether, we're doing very, very fine here. The amount of steel and everything available for this city is enormous, but I don't think that I will be able to make up a gemstone window for every apartment here in this uh, place. We just don't seem to have enough gemstone for that yet. I mean, it is only a part of the city that is lacking, but, well, close enough. Let's just say there are some things that the dwarves of Deepgard will do in our absence. I just uh, figured that there was not much more for me to uh, to to do anymore here because we we pretty much we have soldiers that can take out everything down there. Our goal was to take control of the caverns. That's a check on all marks, you see. We have a nice fortress outside. We've made ourselves a county, even though it really uh, I don't know. It's very sad that this one uh, was a failure. Damn this fire creature. Seriously, that guy was uh, seriously putting a dent to all of our plans. But, well, our next one will be sitting here on the volcano. And I want to mention here, look who has declared war on us. We have successfully pissed off the elves hard enough that they declared a silent, that, that we had a silent war declaration on us. There was uh, never a uh, outspoken war declaration, but they silently did so. Must have been all the trees that we chopped here in the swamp. I seriously don't care. Eurist is doing the artifact now. Um, that sounds wrong. <laughs> Eurist is uh, crafting the artifact. <laughs> well, well. I can always make up as an excuse as I'm, that I'm not a native speaker, so... That's wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> Jokes aside, I really love this fortress, and as with every fortress, I'm quite, I'm kind of sad to to leave it behind. But uh, the volcano fortress will be the adamantine fortress. So the main goal of that beauty will be to craft adamantine. So that will be a very exciting thing because I will rush that industry as quick as possible with all the ramifications that this uh, might include because the banner of shadow is now they they have uh, they have thrived they, they thrived from absolute uh, destruction 
that little shack up there was everything we had to a uh, nation that has some control over this part of the world. We're going to expand our grip of the world right next to that one, <laughs> even including elven warfare. I love that. The, I love the outlook on that, as, uh, especially. All right. So let's give those guys the windows I have promised them. What makes me most happy is the fact that if there is no blind uh, creature, you see that's really giving me PTSD now, um, is coming around. My security system is absolutely airtight. But I find it very amusing that the game immediately flung something at my face, showing me that I am not nearly as invincible as I, uh, as I uh, think I am. Isn't Dwarf Fortress nice to us? Always reminding us of our own mortality by tossing some fun at us. Good old chap. All right. So, a cave crocodile is fighting yet again. These come into the city way too often for my taste. There it is. So, yeah. That is why we are installing these uh, traps, you see. The good thing about uh, animal attacks is they are not nearly as vicious as forgotten beasts or goblins are, or any other evil allied thing. They are more than anything afraid and scared, and therefore that, that really dictates their fighting style. So usually they don't fight to the death. So what do we have here? A silk skirt, family heirloom. So it's decorated with gold, um, it's a spider silk skirt, decorated with gold, leather, elk bird bone, faint yellow diamond, cat bone, water buffalo bone. What a weird mixture of mundane and exclusive materials. Cave spider silk cloth, obviously. More cave spider silk and iron. And it's the image of the bleak woman soot tunnel dusts. All right. It's traveling. All right. It's some local monster that uh, traveled a uh, hundred years ago through these lands. And obviously our, our skirt is depicting the story of that. Why not? I'm all down for uh, local history. I like that. Right. Where were we? Yeah, windows. So, altogether, it feels darn good to rebuild a civilization from scratch. I wanted to do that a long while ago, until I, when I basically when I realized that this is a thing you can do in Dwarf Fortress, I was I was absolutely uh enthralled by the idea of that. And what can I say? It is exactly as much fun as I thought it'd be. I really like that. And the best thing is, as soon as it is less buggy, I will absolutely do it again in another world. Because I gotta say, there, there are a couple of bugs in this whole system that are quite obnoxious. Especially, for example, that the goods and the wares that are produced in every fortress are not flowing back into your culture's um, global trade thing. So all the steel, all the exclusive things that I made here will never affect my civilization directly, which is really a shame. I, I really find that so sad. So that whole rebuilding thing is mostly happening in my in my in the fluff part of my brain but luckily the rest of the simulation is so detailed that it doesn't really hurt the fun that's a really important part for me so yeah turns out, out we are merely lacking the gems for the deep city the rest of the city we are actually able to uh, to, gar uh, to 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 get done here amazing I wouldn't have thought that. I mean, it's mostly the really darned cheap brown jasper, but whatever. It's gemstone. If somebody would come on by 
and give me a free gemstone window, I would be totally thrilled. Even if it would be some dirt cheap uh, gemstone that is not really worth too much. I'd be getting it for free installed into my uh, working room here. Hell yeah. Put me down. So, I consider my, myself a very generous monarch. Whatever the... Yeah, well, they have kings. I mean, the, enti the, the player entity in Dwarf Fortress is a... Uh, Everlasting enigma, so to speak. Alright. There she is. Deep Guard is pretty much finished. I'm unwilling to dig around until I find enough gemstone to fill the up the um, window situation down below in the last level. We could do that, but this is one of the cases where I feel like I'm only neurotically scraping the barrel to fulfill a goal, which is, well, not that insanely important. Let's just say that's something they will get done as soon as we move our attention elsewhere. That is, for me, a much easier way to get the whole thing done. I mean, come on, it is one cozy town. Jeez, I really gotta say, we uh, we have one, one hell of a place here. I really like it. So altogether, what can I say? The thing about the caverns in Dwarf Fortress these days is that I feel like it is one business where you always invest more than you get back. For most forts, it is just easier to never open the caverns truly and just uh, leave it like that. What have we gained? Access to some metals that we could gain anywhere else quite easily. We gained a lot of trouble with the local um, with the local underground monsters, but altogether there's really not much uh, value to be gained. I just figured that we might want to floor this place before we leave. So yeah, this is really something that struck me as a downside. But well, one day there will be a lot of modernizations about this book game. I'm pretty sure about that. And so, at this level of the city, we're going to go and make it marble floored, as it uh, is a nice um, counter to the claystone one. So there will be a uh, fortress tour, a little video about this place, obviously, before we move over to the next fort, the volcano one. I'm very much looking forward to that. And yeah, after that, well, after the volcano one, I mean, we will either our aim for a mountain, I think mountain home and uh, killing off the goblin civilization would be one thing, or elven warfare. I'm not so sure about that. Let me know in the comment section what you guys think. I will also make a poll uh, pretty soon where you guys can, can cast your vote whatever you want you you think should be done next so yeah i'm so happy that this uh fortress was such a success i was very very worried in all honesty about the forgotten beast the threat of these was for me something extremely unpredictable and i've never had a fortress that tried to have open in excess on all three layers at the same time while maintaining the necessity to have it open at all times so it's been a pretty big achievement for me i really gotta say this uh fortress the the forgotten beast traps they feel rather cheesy in all honesty they do but uh even if we wouldn't be working with all the cheese the same system that i'm using could be easily used to lure a new forgotten beast into a system, a chamber network where I can wall it in or, or whatever. There's uh, plenty of options that I could do. It is uh, only the the fact that they can't destroy doors, which is making it kind of cheesy. But uh, even if they can destroy doors, I will find a way. There are options. So I decided as a last streak 
to polish the floors of this place. You see, I really like to have every part of the city in a different uh, style. I also decided that the people of Deep Guard are not so much the statue builders. That's uh, not so much their, uh, their, their kind of thing. We went here for a different style. Ah, well. So my friends, I'll cut this episode a little bit shorter than the uh, previous ones because, well, it's sadly the end of the ride for a deep guard. It's been one hell of a ride though, and I gotta say, it's been fun. It's been one very, very fun fortress. I gotta say, this whole cavern plan, I enjoyed it, and I hope so did you. Next time, we're going to start conquering the volcanoes and what could possibly go wrong. I'm especially looking forward to uh, to the Elven Warfare. I'm not sure how we're going to go uh, uh, about this in a political stance, as the forests are not really that interesting for the dwarves. But, uh, well, I'll be, I'll be having a, uh, a bit of a pondering session about that. So, my friends, Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for being around if you've been around the entire season or even the entire playlist. I don't know. Let me know in the comment section where you came from and uh, what you've already um, watched from, from my Dwarf Fortress stuff. I mean, I do notice that a couple of you are very, very diligent people that are around always, and I really, really appreciate that. You guys keep me going, you know? Therefore, Comments down below, a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I can't wait for the next season. In the description box, you can find the playlist link to all the Dwarf Fortress Let's Plays I did so far. Two worlds full of fortresses, and I would be very, very happy to have you folks. There will be, like I said, proper fortress tour for Deep Guard as well, so stay tuned for that, and catch you all on the next one. Have a good day, and see you soon.